it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about acids and bases. For chemists, we usually talk about acids and bases in terms of Bronsted-Lowry theory. Under this theory, an acid is something that donates a proton, and a base is something that accepts it. The proton is the hydrogen ion, as when it loses an electron, only the proton in its nucleus remains. Proton transfer is very important in chemistry. Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases can often be amphoteric, the ability to act as either an acid or a base. Water is amphoteric. It can act like a base, gaining a proton to become hydronium, or as an acid, donating a proton to become hydroxide. In water, a tiny fraction donate protons in a reaction we call an acid-base reaction, or in the case of water, the auto-ionization of water. Since this is a reaction, we can write an equilibrium constant. As usual, we write products over reactants, but in this case, we only need to write products as the concentration of water is very high. At 25 degrees Celsius, the ionized fraction is very small, but as temperature increases, so too does this ionized fraction. If the proton concentration is above 10 to the minus 7, then the solution is said to be acidic. If it is equal to 10 to the minus 7, then the solution is neutral and basic if the concentration is below 10 to the minus 7. Other solvents, such as ammonia, are amphoteric too. The ammonia molecule can act as an acid or a base. It can accept a proton acting as a base to form ammonium, its conjugate acid, or it can donate a proton acting as an acid to form the azonide conjugate base. An acid and a base will react to produce an acid-conjugate-base pair. Here we have the dissociation of nitric acid, which is a strong acid in water. The nitric acid gives up a proton and becomes a conjugate base because it could potentially gain a proton to form the acid again. The same thing happens to the base, water, only in reverse. A conjugate acid is formed that could donate a proton. A strong bronsted lowry acid or base is one which dissociates completely in a solvent to form its constituent ions. Solvent choice is therefore important. A strong acid in water, such as nitric acid, may not be strong in other solvents. Strong acids and bases have weak conjugate pairs, and the equilibrium moves to form the weaker conjugate pair. But how do we determine the strength of an acid? We know that an acid is something that will easily lose a proton, but to be a strong acid, it needs to have a weak conjugate base that is easy to form. Conversely, a weak acid has a strong conjugate base that easily gains a proton and is therefore unstable. Base strength is determined in a similar manner. A strong base easily accepts a proton and is a weak conjugate acid that is stable and does not easily release the proton. A weak base, conversely, does not easily accept a proton. Acidity can vary considerably. Acids that have a central atom with a large number of electrons are stronger than those with fewer. Acidity also tends to increase as electronegativity decreases. The halogenic acids, a halogen combined with a hydrogen, show a trend wherein hydroiodic acid is stronger than hydrochloric or hydrofluoric acid. Why is this trend present for halogenic acids? Generally, the larger the conjugate base, the more stable it will be. For the halogenic acids, the strength of the acid increases as the size of the anion increases. If we take iodide, for example, its large size means that the negative charge is diffuse and dispersed over a large volume, stabilizing it. The fluoride, conversely, is small and has a high charge density, making it unstable. Bronsted-Lowry basicity trends in water follow a typical pattern. Pyridine is less basic than ammonia due to the electron withdrawing effect of the aromatic ring. Methyl ammonia is more basic than ammonia because of the inductive effect of the alkyl group, causing a more electron-rich nitrogen center that leads to a stronger base, which can better stabilize the proton. Superacids are acid solutions stronger than sulfuric acid. This is a result of the weakness of their conjugate base, which are also typically weak nucleophiles. Some common superacids are triphlic acid and perchloric acid. They were deemed so useful in different branches of chemistry, such as in alkylation, that George Ola received the 1994 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for them. Superbases are bases with very high gas phase proton affinities of greater than 1000 kilojoules per mole. 
This means they attract protons with ease and hold them strongly. The equilibrium lies far to the right. 1,8-bis-dimethylaminonaphthalene is a bronsted lowry superbase and is sometimes called a proton sponge. When it abstracts a proton, a strong intramolecular hydrogen bond is formed. The strong basicity of the proton sponge is thought to arise from two factors. Relief of steric hindrance of two dimethyl amino substituents in close proximity. If the dimethyl amino groups rotate to reduce the lone pair lone pair repulsion, the methyl groups are brought close together. And secondly, the formation of a strong intramolecular hydrogen bond upon protonation. Bronsted Lowry acids can be monoprotic with only one donatable proton or polyprotic with multiple donatable protons. Polyprotic acids become less acidic with each deprotonation. 